Ah, fillets. Yes, as an industrial designer, it's often tempting to fillet everything to make something look smooth and pleasing. But unfortunately, they kind of suck for 3D printing. So in this video, I'm going to show you why fillets aren't the best choice for your 3D printed models and why chamfers are actually probably a better option. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Maker's Muse. So a few months ago I made this thing, which is my Fallout 4 inspired 3D printer. It's pretty much fully 3D printed and took a lot of design effort to make it 3D printable, but also functional. And the thing is, I come from an industrial design background and as an industrial designer, you have to consider aesthetics. But when we think of aesthetics, we think of smooth, curvy objects. But 3D printing isn't always conducive to things like that. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. But this is a very complicated model. So I designed something else to more simply show you the issue with fillets in 3D prints. And that is this. This is my fillet and chamfer test. It's a cube and the cube has fillets, which are these rounded edges here and chamfers, which are these flat edges here with an angle. So these are the two options you have when you want to blend surfaces together. Otherwise, you just have a straight, for example, 90 degree angle. If you want to blend things together, you have the option of doing a fillet, which is a nice rounded edge like this, or a chamfer, which is an angle and straight line between the two parts. And you might want to do this to round off an edge or add strength if it's an internal fillet or internal chamfer, for example. But I'm going to use this to demonstrate why using fillets in 3D prints, specifically FDM, because the layer heights are quite coarse, can cause issues and you might want to avoid it. I've also marked on this model the axes that are responsible. So this is the Z axis looking straight down. This is the Y axis, so front and back. And this is the X axis, so you generally the left and right of a 3D printer. Obviously there's some variations, but that's what this model is designed to represent. This is what the print looks like off my Cetus Mark III, and you can immediately see the issue that you face when you use fillets for FDM 3D prints. The lower fillet has kind of failed. Uh, it looks really, really nasty, but it looked really clean in the 3D model. What's going on? Why does it look so bad when the actual chamfer actually looks quite nice. It's an overhang, it's 45 degrees, but it's quite clean. But what about the top surface? Well, this thing's printed at 0.3 millimeter layer height, so quite coarse for FDM 3D printing. But again, the chamfer is more uniform and clean, whereas the fillet, it starts off nice, but then gets really pretty rough towards the top. But why does our 3D print look like this when our actual 3D model looks so clean and pretty with those fillets. Well, to demonstrate exactly why, I'm gonna show you it in G-Code preview. This is Slicer Prusa Edition, and this is the fillet and chamfer test. And I've sliced it at the same layer heights as my actual print, point, uh, 0 0.3 millimeter layer heights. And let's start down at the bottom here. So I'm gonna zoom in here and scroll right back to our first layer. Okay, first layer on the print bed. And of course I have supports turned off to truly demonstrate why chamfers are superior to fillets for FDM 3D printing. Second layer, look at that. So our fillet starts off at an incredibly steep angle. It's actually overstepping a huge amount from the first layer on the second instantly. It's almost like it's completely over thin air because it basically is. Uh, what about the next layer? Once again, way over into no, into no man's land. Whereas the chamfer has a set angle and it sticks to it. It's 45 degrees. Each step across the layer is a reasonable amount. It can be supported by the previous layer. It needs to get out to basically that magic 45 degree angle roughly before it starts looking any good. And you can see as it goes out further and further, the layers here, as you can see with our radius, the layers overlap more and more and more and more until they start to actually stack on top of each other properly. But those first few, 
there's, there's nothing holding them in space. But if you look at our chamfer side, as that's built up, it starts at a certain angle and just sticks to it. That overlap is consistent, which gives you a very clean, consistent result. But what about the issue with the top surface? Well, as you can probably guess, it's caused by the same thing, just in reverse. As our 3D print starts building up towards the top surface, you can see our chamfer here once again starts off at a set angle and sticks to it. And each step is consistent, which will give you a consistent surface quality. But on our fillet, it starts off very, very gradually, but then gets more and more and more until the point where we get the opposite of what our first layer was. The layers are super far away from each other and they get further and further apart as it gets to that final top surface, which is why the fillet on the top also looks pretty poor when the chamfer looks fairly clean. Now, obviously there's more to this story than this. There is certain circumstances where a fillet on a 3D print can look really, really nice. Can you guys guess where that would be? Well, yeah, on the side. As you can see in our 3D print, the actual fillets on the side look quite nice. I mean, the Cedar software decided to put the seams there. That's just, just ignore that. You could put the seams anywhere, um, depending on your slicing. But ignoring the seams, the actual fillet is really clean. That's because the X, Y axes can precisely control that plastic around that fillet. It's not having to do layers where it has to approximate the fillet and they get coarser or closer together depending on what, what area of the fillet it is. But I mean, look, the chamfer looks really clean as well on the X, Y axis. So you could use a chamfer or fillet for your X, Y axes. You can see that in the G code guys. So like the fillet here is really clean. It's just gonna do a single line of plastic around there, but so is the chamfer. It's also gonna look clean there. So in terms of using chamfers or fillets for your 3D prints, really you want to use chamfers for top or bottom surfaces and fillets if you really wanna use them for the sides of the model and not the top and bottom if you wanna get a clean result. I could leave the video here, but there is one pro tip that I do want to mention, and that is variable layer heights. A lot of you guys are probably screaming at the screen being like, you're using Prusa Edition Angus Slicer. Why aren't you talking about variable layer heights? Well, yeah, you can. So this is a great solution to removing this kind of issue, this poor quality surface finish with the part where you don't want to make the layer heights take forever, like 0.1 millimeter layer heights will mean this will take three times longer than 0.3 but we only really need that detail up the top here. So let's go back to the 3D view and let's go to layer editing. And we can use this to add more detail here. And it's actually suggesting already that we might want to do it in this area. So we can see here, we can add in uh, more, there we go, a, a finer layer height and it actually shows it quite visibly, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, that looks pretty good. So it's it's a bit of a manual process, but we can see it in the preview. If we now slice this and then go to the preview, we can see we've actually added a lot of detail back in to this top area by doing a variable layer height. So it's really cool that a free slicer actually offers this. A lot of slicers now can do variable layer heights. This is a good solution if you have to have that lovely, sexy, curved top surface, but don't want your whole 3D print to take hours more than it otherwise would do. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found this video useful. As a designer, as I said, I love fillets. I used to just chuck them into everything, but unfortunately, when it comes to 3D printing on FDM machines, particularly because the layer heights are quite coarse, they just don't look as good as you might think they will. It's just, it's just how it is. So anyway, this file is available here on Gumroad. It's free, although you can donate to support the channel. It's much appreciated. Um, and you can use it to test out how your machine handles fillets and how it handles chamfers or chamfers. I say chamfer, but whatever. And basically you can figure out how they will look on your machine. And you can also use it to fine tune variable layer heights like I just showed in the Prusa Slicer Edition to get a better top surface. If you did enjoy this video though, guys, I'd love to have you subscribe. It's my aim here on Makers Muse to empower your creativity through technology. And I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later, guys. Bye.